The social networks and the social internet world we have obviously influences the people, but it obviously goes the other direction as well. And um, I don't think it's all about technology, but I think the people are the most important, but the people are influenced by how we live technology. But like in the US, when you talk, when you hear someone who's 35, my age, talk about privacy, they're projecting onto a young person. And it, and it reminds me of what I imagine it was like when young kids started listening to rock and roll. And the parents were like, ah, they're rock and roll, down with, you know, like it's terrible. And it's, and it's, it's just a different generation. I really wonder, and I challenge myself to think about this a lot, if I was 15, what does it mean and how does the internet work? And, and I don't know the answer, obviously, because I'm not 15, but when I do talk to 15-year-olds, I have no idea what's going on. And so I, I don't, I, I really am excited for them to be older and to watch how they work. Germany is very interesting because culturally there's a lot of examples of data being used for not great things, you know, whether it's, you know, East Berlin or World War II or whatever, there's many examples of that. Whereas I have none of that cultural identity. And so many of my peers in the U.S., we also, we don't have that cultural identity. Um, and even more so, if you look at young people, and I wonder about Germany here, the young people have such a different perspective on privacy and data and control of data than even people who are five years older than them. It will only get worse in the future, right? Um, I don't actually think it's bad, um, but I'm a little, I may be a little bit different and I, I obviously, uh, I think more data is better. And so it's, it's, I'm also probably less privacy too.